Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our very special guest and longtime friend of American Truth Project is Graham Ledger today. You probably know him as a longtime national news broadcaster. He's an Emmy Award winner and a scholar when it comes to the politics and how it relates in America to the Constitution. Welcome, Graham. An all-around lousy golfer. <laughs> we, we won't talk about your handicap. There's, there's an incredible threat that I've now heard two or three times. Ocasio-Cortez said it. Nancy Pelosi said it. Chuck Schumer has hinted at it. That they may, I know this sounds astounding, they may throw an impeachment at Trump Right. Just to derail the discussion about the Senate doing its job long enough to get past the election into next year. What do you make of that? Well, I, I believe that it probably wouldn't transpire uh, between now and November 3rd. Uh, I think what Nancy Pelosi is talking about here is if Donald Trump wins re-election, she wants to label him as the only president of the United States that has been impeached twice. You know, that's her goal before she retires off to her uh, grape vineyard in, in Napa somewhere in her double uh, uh, sub-zero refrigerators that we got to see during the uh, COVID nonsense. But let's back up a little bit uh, here first, uh, Barry. Article 2, Section 2 of the United States Constitution says very clearly, I think he used these words, advise and consent of the Senate. It doesn't say anything about, hey, you know what, hold off until after the election. It doesn't say anything about a timeline. It says this is what the president shall do, shall select uh, nominees of the Supreme Court and with the advice and consent of the Senate, they shall assume positions or not uh, on, on the Supreme Court. That is the process. It says nothing uh, about an election year. And it's interesting, Mitch McConnell's response to all this, I think was fascinating, but I don't agree with Mitch McConnell a hell of a lot, but on this one, it, it actually makes sense. And I'm sure it doesn't make sense to the radical left. But he said in 2016, the Senate, of course, was in a majority Republican, and, and he was the leader uh, back then, and they blocked his nominee. And his rationale on that was the people elected a majority in the United States Senate to hold off Barack Obama. Well, it's, it's reverse here, right? The people elected a Republican president to do his job, Article 2, Section 2, and they have a Republican Senate to do their job. So they're just functioning as normal. And I believe, Barry, this is the Trump presidency manifest destiny. This is what we're talking about here. Because if we back up and we look at 2016, remember how important it was right around this time? It was sometime in the summer of 2016, if I remember right, where Donald Trump was being pinned down about who he would nominate to the United States Supreme Court. And many of the people that wanted him to come forward with his list were evangelists and orthodox members of, of, of certain religions because they wanted to know where Donald Trump would come down on issues, for example, like abortion. And let's face it, we have many cases in the lower federal courts right now that are headed toward the Supreme Court. There's a case uh, out of, uh, I believe, Alabama. There's one out of uh, Louisiana. They may be headed to the United States Supreme Court and may determine the future of Roe versus Wade and, and may mitigate, if you will, Roe versus Wade and change the entire course of, quote, legal abortion uh, in this country. But it was in 2016 that millions and millions of Americans waited, Barry, and you and I may have been one of them waited with bated breath to hear what Donald Trump was going to come up with in terms of his list of nominees, not only the Supreme Court, but the lower court as well. And it turned out, what do you know? Most of these jurists were constructionists. Most of them were constitutionalists. And I think this is what put Donald Trump over the top in November of 2016, beating Hillary Clinton. It was the ev evangelical and the orthodox vote that put Donald Trump over the top. So this is his destiny. This is why he was brought to America here at this moment in time, is to fill this portion of his manifest destiny, and that is to fill as many positions on the United States Supreme Court as possible with people who adhere 
to the United States Constitution. So I agree with you constitutionally, Graham, that the job of the president is to fill vacancies. The job of the Senate is to advise and consent. It's not only just their right, it's their requirement. It's part of the job description. In fact, the people that agree with the president wanting to make the nomination include the late Justice Ginsburg, who said in 2016, the president doesn't serve for three years and take off the fourth year. If there's a vacancy in the fourth year, it's the president's job to appoint someone. Now, somebody witnessed her changing her mind on her deathbed, which may or may not have happened, but the press has picked this up to the point where they seem to think that anarchy will result and should result if, God forbid, the president does his job and the Senate does their job. Why is the, is the press so fervently anti-appointment right now and beating the drums? And I don't just mean MSNBC and CNN, nor O'Donnell at CBS News talked about the fact that either of the women that Trump is now considering will change the court forever as if they're all going to have leprosy. So the question is, why is the media doing what the media does? The a answer is, you know, I made a mistake the other day, uh, Barry. I actually watched the CBS Evening News and I could not, and I hadn't watched literally in years. It's probably been a decade since I sat down and I watched 22 minutes of their content. That's how long a, a newscast goes when you remove the commercials. 20, it was a 22 minute propaganda reel on behalf of the modern Democrat party and Joe Biden. And if, if you're Joe Blow sitting at home and you're getting your news from CBS or NBC, same thing, and ABC, and we're not even gonna bring in the other ones, just the main networks, the, the big three we used to call them, if you're getting your news from them, you're going to think that Joe Biden is completely lucid, that he um, is some sort of great orator, he did wonderful things in Washington, D.C., that he's not hiding in his library, and you would think that Donald Trump is the Antichrist, that he is evil, and that everything he does is wrong. And so this is what the modern mainstream media does. It's unfortunate because there are millions of Americans who watch the mainstream media, who watch, as you mentioned, Nora O'Donnell, and they are actually thinking they're getting unbiased reporting. It is the worst, most biased reporting I have ever seen. And it was bad during the Dan Rather days, because as a, as a quote journalist, as a, as a member of the media, um, I can pick apart a, a report maybe better than anybody else can. And so watching this recent reporting, whether it's on Donald Trump or the potential uh, nominee does not surprise me. It saddens me. It's one of the reasons why I believe your program, Barry, is so important, that you have an alternative voice out there that other people can listen to and, and realize that there's so much propaganda out there. And so the answer to your question is, the reason why they're attacking the nominee and, and the process here, the, the very constitutional process, is because it fits into their agenda. Attack Donald Trump, harm Donald Trump as much as possible, try and make sure he's not reelected, try and harm the process, because if they harm the process, the constitutional process, it's easier to burn down the rest of the country. That's what this is all about, for them to impose their Marxist socialist agenda on this republic. Every institution, every bit of our foundation must be blown apart. And unfortunately, the mainstream media is part of that effort. Well, let me, let me give you what the American people feel. Um, this poll, ironically, was conducted just the week before Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away. So Americans were polled across the country being asked if there is a vacancy that occurs before the election should the president be allowed to uh, nominate a replacement and should the Senate hold hearings? Get this, 67% of Americans across all parties and affiliations, 67% said, yes, they 
should have hearings and there should be a new nomination. So my question to you, that's before Ginsburg and before the propaganda tidal wave was released. Do you think if Trump comes through this weekend and nominates somebody, as he says he will, will the Senate get that nomination through before the election? What's your opinion? I, I, I believe they will. I think Mitch McConnell has signaled um, that he will. And I believe it was Rush Limbaugh who uh, you know, pointed out the obvious, and that is that uh, they don't even need to hold hearings, really. If they want to have an up or down vote in committee, fine. But it does, again, Article 2, Section 2 of the Constitution says nothing about Lindsey Graham and a gavel and uh, you know, having these committees decide where the nominees goes. It's, it's part of the rules of the Senate. It's part of the process of the Senate. It's been established post-1787, which is fine. But I think Mitch McConnell has signaled that he's, he's going to do that. But you know, there's another element here, uh, Barry. And I, on social media, uh, I have uh, not been afraid to say that I think Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you know, people are putting these RIPs out there. I haven't been doing that. I think she was a blight on America. I think she did a lot of damage. I believe that she is complicit in the deaths of millions and millions of unborn babies. But the reason uh, I bring this up is because I firmly believe that the framers of the Constitution had no intention of the Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, hanging in there uh, as long as they did and being barely lucid. And I, I'm one of these people who believes we ought to have term limits for the United States Supreme Court. And I know we could look at Clarence Thomas, who I, I think is about as great a jurist as you can get on the Supreme Court, and he could be term limited out. I know that. But I also believe there are other Clarence Thomases out there. And I think if you ask Clarence Thomas that, he would say so himself. But let's look at the current makeup of the court. This is why Donald Trump's reelection is so crucial and why his manifest destiny originated in 2016 should continue through 2020 um, and that election cycle. Breyer, you know, Breyer is 82 years old. Clarence Thomas himself is 72 years old. And Justice Alito is 70 years old. And we don't know what God has in store for these people. We don't know if they have designed. We've heard Clarence Thomas indicate that maybe he's thinking about hanging up the gavel. And of course, that would be a tragedy. But if Clarence Thomas were to hang up the gavel, then let it happen during a Trump administration part two. And so we have some jurists on the Supreme Court who either, you know, maybe getting up there in, in, in age where they, they may be considering some sort of uh, retirement here. And, and so this is very, very important when you look down the road. And again, you consider who you are choosing for president of the United States. This is crucial. Graham, thanks so much for joining us today. Tell our viewers across America where they can get your opinions and where they can follow you. Well, you can go to GrahamLedger.com. That's GrahamLedger.com. And you can uh, see some of my videos there. And you can also subscribe to my podcast, which is called The Ledger Report. All you have to do is hit subscribe and it's for free. There's, there's no charge. You just put in your email and you can get my podcast delivered to you uh, a couple, three times a week right in your email box. Barry, if you haven't signed up, then please sign up. I will make sure to do it again. I haven't been seeing it. I probably did it wrong. You know me. I'm not the most <laughs> techie guy. And for those of you that haven't subscribed to ATP Report, take out your cell phones, text the message TRUTH, send it to 88202, push send. You'll be automatically subscribed to what we're doing at ATP. You'll get it on your cell phone every couple of days. And like Graham, we never charge for content either. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.